Hello and welcome, I'm Alistair Christie and in this guide we're going to look at client datasets and providers. This example should look pretty familiar by now. It's yet another um, fish facts um, application. Um, it, basically we have our um, data source going to our client dataset to our provider to our SQL dataset which uh, selects star from BioLife connected to our TSQL connection which is hooked up to Interbase. Um, so that's that. Um, we also have a bunch of actions. This open close action. Um, basically it just uh, opens the um, data set or closes it depending on if it's active or not. And we also have these three actions which uh, correspond to these three buttons. So the standard apply updates uh, revert and undo. And um, if I run that and open our data set, I can make a change and apply updates. If we go out and run it again, uh, it was persistent, and we'll see that again. Okay, so that's that's the basic tour of the application. So what I'm going to do, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get all the rather than getting all the fish, I'm just going to get the the, um, the the fish of category cod, and I'm going to do that in a strange way. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to um, change our SQL. My life command text is assigned select star from might as well be consistent from by life where category equals cod and result is assigned. Um, uh, our data from the, the data set provider and I'll just make a minor change in open instead of going open signed get card So let's run that, and fingers crossed, I, I've typed everything correctly. There we go. So there's our, our two um, category cod uh, fish. Now, some interesting things to note. I haven't called CDS biolife.open, and I also haven't done anything with the biolife, um, haven't need to call open on the biolife um, SQL, whatever it is, uh, SQL dataset. So I've just just had to assign the data uh, or access the data and it's opened it. Um, so next. So I'm just going to give us a little bit more room. And let's add a edit box and call it um, Category and set that blank by default, and let's also add a label. Um, I hate that when that happens. Okay, and let's go back to the code. And up to the top. Q 
get category. Takes a string parameter and returns an early variant. Okay. If category is blank. Let's go select star from bio life. Else um, Okay, that looks all right, and you will change this to any category you got text, and I think that looks all right. Fingers crossed. So we can run that, and we can say. Cod or eel. Uh, I thought eel was a category, but anyway, uh, we'll leave it blank. Uh, of course, it was. There we go. Now, but we can't say eel with a lowercase. Uh, e because it doesn't match, so we'll just fix that up briefly. Um, where upper category equals uppercase category. So we'll just convert the, them both to uppercase so that they compare more easily. So if we run that now. I type in eel, we get eel. Now, what is also interesting, if I make a change, it, um, the apply updates still works. If I close and open, our change was persisted. Now, that of course works because our uh, dataset provider is still hooked up to our client dataset. So, um, I don't know if you'll find uh, that useful, but um, it's interesting all the same. Um, now, of course, these functions could be in a different different unit, and in fact, uh, they could actually be in a different application if you're uh, doing some multi-tier stuff. Um, and actually, just before we finish up, uh, we should refactor that and say, um, Um, so just to be tidy. Um, so we'll save that. We might use this example again next time. Maybe we'll convert this to, to be multi-tier with the functions. Um, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. Thanks for taking the time to watch. This was Alistair Christie.